And so begins the first and probably only time I will speak about all 182 gates of the Gra Tree. So, <clears throat> these are the four gates we will be talking about today, or I will be talking about today. Um, <clears throat> now, these four gates um, deal with the supernal triad, uh, which is the supernal world, the eternal world, the non-sequential, non-temporal realm. Okay? And the gates start from the top and work their way all, to, all the way to the bottom of the tree in sequential order. Now, you'll understand that a little bit more by the time we get to the fourth gate. So, the first gate is Kether to Chokma via the path of He, the path of Ares. Now, you can refer to my previous videos to get the details of these components, these three components of this gate. So we start with the eye. Okay, now to work this gate, you have to stick yourself in the eye as deeply as you can. You want that to be your exclusive focus. The infinite eye, the infinite uh, conglomeration of the awareness of all things, everything, the awareness of everything. It is all consciousness, because everything is conscious. Everything is made of consciousness. That is the root of everything, okay? So, we go from there, and we're heading towards Hakma. Now, this is <clears throat> coming from that uh, exclusive focus on simply I. I mean, it's the most simple thing in the universe. That feeling, that sense, that uh, existence as simply I. And we come down to Hakma. And it's the self-realization that the I exists. In Hakma, the I is infinitely complex. In Kether, it's infinitely simple. So it's the realization of the I that it is infinitely complex. Okay? And that transition is Aries. The sign of Aries. And the letter He, which means window. The overwhelming discovery of the I as it makes this transition is that it means something. It has a significance. It has a character. It has its own particular uh, traits, uh, attributes. It is something unique. <clears throat> it has meaning. Now, I call this essential meaning because it is the meaning of the I. It is universal. It is essential. Okay? So, <clears throat> you have to, in working this gate, make this shift from I am, from I to I am. I exist. I have meaning. <clears throat> so in that transition, um, it can be sort of overwhelming, depending on how deeply you go into it. If you really get into that infinite expansion of awareness and the uh, the realization that the I is the awareness of everything in the infinite cosmos all at once. 
That is the I in Hokma. That is the awareness of the I in Hokma. So you need to make this shift from the infinite simplicity of I to the, incom the infinite complexity of I am. Okay? And in doing that, <clears throat> you will come to understand the infinite nature of consciousness, the truly infinite nature of consciousness. And you will understand essential meaning, where essential meaning comes from, what causes essential meaning, what is essential meaning. Now, the second gate is Kether to Bina, okay? Via the path of Vav, which means nail, spike, that which affixes one thing to another, and it's the zodiacal sign of Taurus, ruled by Venus. Aries, ruled by Mars, essential meaning. Taurus, ruled by Venus, which is beauty, <clears throat> love, you know, this idealized perfection. Okay. So, and that is really what this path is about. Now, again, you start in the infinite simplicity of the eye in Kether. And you need to shift to the infinite complexity of form. Okay, so I becomes form in its infinite variety. There are an infinite number of forms in the cosmos. And those forms are always changing. Oh, no form, no singular form is permanent, eternal. Form itself is eternal, but no specific individual form is eternal. Okay? So you're descending into eternal form. And in that process, the overwhelming experience is it's just automatic and it's perfect. Every form is perfect in its expression of the essential meaning of the I. Okay? That is Bina. So as you are descending, what is happening is absolutely perfect. It's the only way it could be the ultimately natural form, okay? So, in that transition, what you are learning is <clears throat> the consciousness that inhabits every form. Every form is a bit of the I, okay? It is the I that creates, causes form. It is part of the I, just as essential meaning is part of the I. It's a product of the I realizing what it is. Okay, and that it exists. It has meaning and it has form. And they're both equal. Hokma and Bina can't have one without the other. I mean, they cause each other, basically. Okay? So you come down into form. You make that shift in awareness. 
Now, one thing I've totally forgotten to say about working the gates. So, <clears throat> that path of Aries, you make that transition to Hakma, and in working a gate, it's not just one direction. It's both directions. You've got to return to Kether. Okay? You go, you switch, you transit <clears throat> to Hakma. You make that transition of awareness into Hakma from the I to the I am, and then you come back to Kether. And in that reverse journey, it's, <clears throat> as with most of the journeys back to Kether, it's a return to simplicity, of infinite simplicity, singularity, okay? From the infinite complex to the infinitely simple. So, you're going from infinitely simple to infinitely complex, and then from infinitely complex back to infinitely simple. So, as I say, you, you learn the essence of essential meaning and <clears throat> pursue deeply enough and often enough <sighs> You really get to a stage where I, I would say you master essential meaning in the creation and manipulation of essential meaning. The true mastery is right here in this path. That's the ultimate, the highest magic imaginable. Okay. So, <clears throat> the second gate, you transition from Kether, infinite simplicity, to Bina, infinite form. And you learn about that creation of form and what is the true nature of form and what is it expressing. And then you make that transition in reverse. You go from the infinite complexity of form, ever-changing form, the simplicity, infinite simplicity of Cather. So, it's a transition into infinite form and back out of infinite form. And that, that brings an intimate knowledge of form, the perfection of form. Okay, now, the third gate. <clears throat> the third gate is a gate of Bina already done Hakma, we've moved to Bina, and so there is another path that enters Bina. There's only one path that enters Hakma, and that's from Kether. Bina, there's two paths that enter Bina, one from Kether, path of all, and one from Hakma, the path of Shin, the mother letter of fire. That is the third gate, okay? Now, in Kabbalah, this is also called the Hashmal, the speaking silence. And as I mentioned before, Shin is about the universal language, that conversion from essential meaning into essential form. Essential meaning must express itself, and it expresses itself through form. Form is the expression of essential meaning. So in this case, we're starting in Hakma. All of that essential meaning, an infinite amount of essential meaning, that must express itself. That's what essential meaning does. Essential meaning expresses itself. <clears throat> it manifests itself. That's its expression is manifestation. An expression is a manifestation of meaning, okay? So, it must express itself. And this is an infinitely large amount of must express itself. And that is the power of Shin that rushes into Bina and exists as form, as infinite, essential form, that perfect fit for every essential meaning is here in Bina. And there are an infinite number of them. 
and it is always changing. Okay? So that is Shin, this rush of essential meaning in its desperate urge to express itself. It's an undeniable force that passes here from the pillar of force into the pillar of form. The pillar of force creates, as it were, the pillar of form. The pillar of form is a natural <clears throat> result of the existence of the pillar of force. The two are inseparable. Okay? And that's what you're traversing here in this path. So you start <clears throat> in the realm of essential meaning with this urge to express itself and this urge just rips across the path of Shin into Bina and forms itself. It takes on all these forms and is the perfect expression of all the essential meaning rushing into Bina. And then you go against that rush of essential meaning into Bina and return to Hakma. Now at first this re the, uh, the rush, uh, for the flow, the natural flow from Hakma to Bina is very easy to travel. In fact, you have to slow yourself down because it will be, you know, the um, inclination is to just instantly uh, end up in Bina, but you want to savor that transition from essential meaning into essential form so that you come to understand that process of how and why that happens. And the reverse, the first time or two you make this reverse, it may be a struggle like you're, you're you're trying to swim against the flow of a fast-moving river, you know, because it is that kind of experience. But if you persist, you learn just as much making that transition back to essential meaning. You learn about the, the essential meaning that fills every form and how it fills every form by going against that flow back to its source in essential meaning. This path <clears throat> is all about that universal language because all forms speak, express their meaning. And that is the universal language. Everything speaks through its form. Our words are forms that we speak our meaning through. Our thoughts are forms that express meaning. Every form that we perceive is expressing its own meaning. That is the universal language that goes oh, far beyond any human spoken language. With, I mean, and it is universal. Every form speaks this language. Okay? So, in this transition, you learn all about the universal language, and how to read meaning in form, how to hear that silent speech, the hashmal, silent speaking. Okay. So that's the third gate. Now the fourth gate, we put all this together, is the first triangular form in the gates. And it forms the supernal triangle. 
the realm of eternity, the non-temporal, non-sequential realm. Now, since this is a gate of Bina, because it's just been enabled by the path of Shin, the last path that enters Bina, this path enables this triangular form. That is where the gate begins. It begins from Hokma, goes into Bina via Shin, and then up to Kether via Vav, the path of Taurus, and down from Kether back to Hokma via the path of He, the path of Aries. Okay? That's where the gate ends. Then we go the reverse as well. We sort of undo the gate. We go back to Kether, down to Bina, and back to Hokma. So, <clears throat> This gate all focuses on Chokmah, basically, the realm of essential meaning. And it traces the essential meaning passing into essential form, and then that form releasing into the infinite simplicity of Kether, and then reforming itself into the infinitely infinite complexity of essential meaning. And then we reverse that process, releasing to the infinite simplicity of Kether, coming back down to the infinite complexity of Bina, and flow, you know, uh, traveling against that strong flow of the path of Shin back to its source in Hokma essential meaning. So we learn about the action and the manifestation, the, the root and the effect of essential meaning. This is very much like a master class in essential meaning. This gate, pursued deeply enough, you will understand everything about essential meaning. Okay. So those are the first four gates. The next, we will probably do three gates of Tiferet, the first three gates of Tiferet. So, till then, bye-bye.